While walking in the forest, a man found an unusual, lonely puppy. The man felt sorry for the poor thing and took him home. Soon the man took the found animal to the veterinary clinic, but the vet, seeing the puppy, opened his mouth in surprise. John loved walking in the forest near his home. It was his favorite pastime, especially after long workdays. He often took binoculars to watch birds and a video camera to capture beautiful moments of nature. Sometimes he stayed in the forest until sunset, enjoying the silence and peace that nature gave. One warm spring day, John heard a strange sound coming from the bushes. The sound was like a mix of squeaking and munching, something John had never heard before in these places. He stopped in confusion, listening to the unusual noise, which gradually became louder and more persistent. He felt his heart beat faster from curiosity and slight anxiety. Intrigued and a little cautious, John carefully parted the branches and saw a small defenseless creature behind them. At first glance, it looked like a puppy, but something about its appearance seemed unusual. The animal had almost bare skin of a pinkish tint and a disproportionately large head. Perhaps it was one of the hairless dog breeds John's friends had told him about. The whole body of the puppy looked as if it didn't have the strength even to move. John felt his heart tighten with compassion when he saw this little creature trembling, as if begging for help. He imagined how long this puppy might have been alone here, desperately trying to survive. The puppy looked exhausted and weak. Its sides rose often, and it shivered all over, as if it was in constant fear. John realized that he couldn't leave it here alone. He took off his jacket and gently wrapped the animal in it, trying not to hurt it. At that moment, he felt a deep connection with the puppy, as if it was now his duty to take care of him. When John picked up the puppy, he felt how fast its little heart was beating. The animal's skin was warm and slightly rough to the touch. The puppy gave off a strange smell, unlike the smell of ordinary pets. On the way home, John carefully examined his find. The animal had unusually large eyes with long eyelashes, which gave it an even more mysterious look. Its muzzle was elongated, with a small flat nose at the end. Its paws seemed disproportionately large compared to its body, and its tail was short and thick. John wondered why he had never seen such puppies before, and where it could have come from in this area. The man tried to remember if he had ever heard of such puppies, but nothing came to mind. Suddenly the animal began to make piercing sounds like a cry for help. John quickened his pace, feeling his heart pounding with excitement. He feared that the puppy might die in his arms. At home, John was met by his wife, Sarah. She gasped in surprise when she saw the strange puppy in her husband's hands. Where did you find him? She asked with a mix of curiosity and apprehension. John told her in detail how he found the abandoned puppy in the forest and added that he couldn't pass by, hoping to save its life. Sarah, feeling pity for the baby, said they should feed him first. She quickly warmed up some milk and tried to feed the creature with a bottle. However, the animal refused to drink, turning its face away and making pitiful sounds. John and Sarah tried different foods, minced meat, vegetable puree, even baby food, but all to no avail. The couple began to panic when they noticed the creature becoming weaker. Its breathing became labored and its eyes began to close. In despair, Sarah suggested calling the veterinary clinic to find out what to do in such a situation. John, worried about the little puppy's condition, suggested they rush to the 24-hour veterinary clinic in the nearby city, despite the late hour. On the way to the clinic, the animal began to tremble and make weak moans as if saying goodbye to life. Sarah held it in her arms, trying to warm it with her body heat. John drove the car at top speed, praying they would make it in time to save the suffering animal. At the clinic, they were met by an elderly veterinarian, Mike, with a tired face. Seeing the unusual puppy, he frowned and quickly led them to the examination room. Where did you get him, Mike asked sternly, starting the examination. While the vet worked, John and Sarah waited in the corridor, holding hands. They heard something fall and clink in the examination room, and the vet giving loud commands to the nurse. The minutes dragged on painfully long, as if time had stopped. John and Sarah were anxious, imagining the worst outcome. Finally, the vet came out to them. His face was very serious. I managed to stabilize him, but I've never seen such an animal before. We need to do more tests, said Mike, wiping sweat from his forehead. John and Sarah spent a sleepless night at the clinic, 
taking turns watching over their unusual ward's cage. They watched every movement of the puppy, whom they named Buddy, hoping he would recover. By morning, they thought the animal was feeling a little better. The puppy even tried to stand on its strange legs, giving the couple a mixed feeling of relief and anxiety. Buddy spent another day in the clinic, after which the vet told the couple they could take the puppy home. Mike gave them a bag of nutritious food, which was the only thing their unusual pet agreed to eat. John and Sarah happily took Buddy home, confident that everything would be fine now. Two days later, veterinarian Mike called them to check on Buddy's condition. He also said that his zoologist colleagues were very interested in the unusual creature. Scientists suggested that it might be a baby of a rare species. Mike asked for permission to come with a group of zoologists to examine the find again. John and Sarah agreed, hoping to finally find out what kind of creature they had taken in. At this time, their home became a place of real scientific interest. Phone calls did not stop, and John barely managed to answer the vet's colleagues' questions. Despite the excitement, he and Sarah were happy, feeling they were helping with serious scientific work. Meanwhile, veterinarians and zoologists continued their research. Professor Robert often called John to discuss his guesses and assumptions. Each new call gave the couple hope that they would soon learn the truth about their unusual ward. They tried not to make guesses so as not to be disappointed if they were wrong. The couple agreed to keep everything a secret, but curiosity and anxiety did not leave them. Every morning they anxiously awaited news from the vet, hoping to learn more about Buddy's origins. A week passed, and during this time the animal noticeably strengthened. John and Sarah were happy to see Buddy becoming more active and confidently moving around the house on his unusual legs. He even started making happy sounds when Sarah brought him food. A few days later, the professor reported that Buddy's DNA analysis showed he belonged to a rare species of mammals never seen before in this region. One evening, while John and Sarah were watching TV, the doorbell rang. Two men in uniform were at the door. They introduced themselves as zoo employees and asked if the couple had found any unusual animals lately. John and Sarah exchanged glances. They didn't know if they should tell about their unusual find. But then a characteristic squeak came from the room and the zoo employees became alert. They asked for permission to inspect the apartment. The couple reluctantly agreed. When the men saw the animal, their faces lit up. Here he is, our runaway exclaimed one of them. It turned out that the cub found in the forest was a rare type of pig, a babarusa, that had escaped from the zoo through a gap in the fence. The zoo staff said that Buddy's mother was very upset after his disappearance and refused to eat. They asked to return the cub. John and Sarah were sad to part with their unusual pet, but they understood that it would be better for the animal. They petted him goodbye and even shed a tear. The zoo staff thanked them for taking care of the cub and invited them to visit him anytime. They also reported that the zoo's management decided to reward John and Sarah with lifetime free tickets. Since then, the couple often visited the zoo to see their former pet. They happily watched him grow and play with his Babarusa mom. And at home, they had a photo of their unusual pet and the memory of the incredible adventure they experienced together. This story became part of their lives, and John and Sarah often told it to their friends and family, adding new details and emotions they experienced during those amazing days.